Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. So the 2025 macroeconomics questions just came out uh, and uh, this is the unboxing video. I've gone through the questions and figured out what I think the answers are likely to be on the rubrics. Um, again, I don't know uh, if for sure with what these are going to be. While I grade and score microeconomics exams uh, uh, this, you know, over the summer, I, I don't score macroeconomics exams, but I but I do talk to people who do, and uh, and I've of course looked at all of the previous rubrics uh, that have been uh, put out by the College Board in the past. So these are my best guess answers. We'll see for sure if I'm correct when the rubrics come out. Sometimes they raise the bar and make a question more difficult than I expect. Sometimes they lower the bar and make the question a little more easy than I expect. Uh, that way they can differentiate the twos from the threes, from the fours, from the fives, and all that. Uh, let me know how you uh, how you did in the comments below, or let me know what you think about my answers. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to ReviewEcon.com. I know you're done with uh, this class, but if you've, if you've appreciated this channel, I hope you will help me out with the algorithm a bit. Give a like to this video as well. Share it with a friend as well. And if you know anybody who's going to be taking uh, micro or macro AP economics next year, make sure you tell them about ReviewEcon.com. I appreciate you buying the review booklets and, and using the website and all that stuff as well. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the, uh, what I think the answers are. All right, moving on to the first question. Uh, we have uh, uh, Barikos. I'm not sure how to say the name of this country, but uh, Barikos is in uh, short run equilibrium uh, with its economic data down below in that table. Uh, and they uh, currently have a government budget that's balanced and the capital and financial account balance is zero as well which by the way means their current account balance is zero also uh, what is the numerical value for part a uh, of the actual unemployment rate in maricos now down below we see the cyclical unemployment rate and the natural unemployment rate now remember the natural unemployment rate is the unemployment rate we have when we have zero cyclical unemployment and so if we just add the cyclical rate to the natural rate that's going to give us the current unemployment rate of 10 percent Simply state that, I think you're gonna get a point for this one. So moving on to part B, uh, we have uh, the, uh, we have to draw a Phillips curve using the numbers in the table, and, uh, and that's the Phillips curve for Barricos, not only the short run Phillips curve, but also the long run Phillips curve. And we're going to label the current short run equilibrium point as point X, and we have to use the numbers in that table as well. So there's my answers there. We have our long run Phillips curve uh, that is vertical, and we have 4%, that's the natural rate. We have a downward sloping short run Phillips curve at point X, that is our current unemployment rate of 10% that we just identified in part A, and we have our 3% uh, actual inflation rate. And then over there on the intersection uh, between the two curves, we have our expected inflation rate of 5%. Um, I'm not sure if you'll require, be required to have all of those interest rates, but definitely some of those, it will depend on how hard they make this point in the rubric. On to part C. Based on the graph we just drew in part B, we're going to identify one fiscal policy action that the government of Barricos could take to move the economy towards long run equilibrium. Remember, they have a recessionary gap because the unemployment rate is higher than the natural rate. And so here's our answer. You can either decrease taxes or increase spending. Either one of those answers is gonna get you the point. On to part D. Assume that the fiscal policy action that you identified in part C is implemented. Will the government budget uh, in Barricos move to a surplus, move into a deficit, or remain balanced? And then we have to also explain. So here's my answer. It's going to be a deficit. And that's because there was a balanced budget, which meant taxes equal spending. And now taxes will be less than government spending. So the government must increase borrowing. All right, we're moving on to part D double I. We're going to assume that there are no inflationary expectation changes. And on the graph we drew in part B, we're going to show the new possible equilibrium point and we're going to label it point Z. So any point that's higher up on that short run Phillips curve is going to work. I put mine right there back at equilibrium and anything higher I think will be counted as correct. There we go. Moving on to part D, triple I, we're going to draw a correctly labeled graph of the loanable funds market and show the impact of the fiscal policy action that we just identified. Remember, this is expansionary fiscal policy. Expansionary fiscal policy is going to increase borrowing. That's the crowding out effect. There are two ways to graph it on the loanable funds market. You have a downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve. Uh, the equilibrium, you, you have Y at the Y axis labeled real interest rate. The x-axis is labeled quantity of loanable funds. You can either shift the demand to the right or the supply to the left. Either one of those shifts will work as long as the real interest rate increased, and that'll get you your points on this part. 
Moving on to part E. Uh, Barricos is an open economy with a flexible exchange rate based solely on the change in the real interest rate that we just had in our graph. Uh, will the capital and financial account move into a surplus, move into a deficit, or remain the same? And we have to explain. So it's going to become a surplus, and that's because the real interest rate that just increased is going to cause financial capital, uh, it cause a financial capital inflow to Barricos, and that's because foreign investors seek that high interest rate. All right, on to part F. Based on the change in the Barricos financial and capital account balance that we just identified in part E, what will happen to the international value of the Barricos currency? And again, we have to explain. So here's my answer. Barricos currency is going to appreciate, and that's because uh, thanks to the higher interest rates, foreign investors seek that high interest rate. So that gives us a inflow of financial capital and that will cause an increase in the demand. I think they will also accept a decrease in the supply of Barrico's currency and that causes the currency to appreciate. I think either uh, increase in demand or decrease in supply will work. All right, on to part two or question number two. We're going to assume that Genland is in short run equilibrium and the real output level is above the full employment real output. Uh, the banking system in Genland is ample reserves. We're going to identify a specific monetary policy action that the central bank of Genland would implement to return the economy to full employment in the short run. Remember, under ample reserves, we just got two things you could possibly say. Only one of them actually does something, but that one is actually in the other one. And that is to either increase interest on reserves or increase administered rates. Remember, one of those administered rates is interest on reserves. Either one of those answers is going to work for you. For over on part B, we have to draw the graph of the reserves market and show the impact of that policy of that uh, foreign and we have to show the impact of that uh, central bank action we just identified on the policy rate. One thing you could do is shift that bottom portion of the demand curve or the lower bound up if you said uh, to increase interest on reserves. If you said increase administered rates, then you should also shift the top portion as well. Remember that Y axis is going to be labeled the policy rate, the quantity of reserves on that X axis and that supply of reserves must be vertical. All right, so moving on to part C. Uh, chain, based on the change in interest that we just saw in part B, will each of the following increase, decrease, or remain the same in Genland in the short run? First of all, we have the price of previously issued bonds. It's decreased. And that's because bond prices and interest rates are inversely related. So since we saw an increase in the interest rate, that means bond prices must fall. On part C double I, we have the price level, uh, what happened to the price level, and we also have to explain for that one. That's decrease because the interest, uh, because the increase in the interest rate will cause the, a decrease in gross investment and other interest rate sensitive spending. I don't think you have to have that part that's in parentheses, but it shows up on the rubrics usually. And that's going to cause the aggregate demand curve to shift to the left. Uh, over on uh, question number three now, we've got uh, to draw a, uh, an ASAD model. Um, and this economy is currently in long run equilibrium. And we're going to have uh, all of the appropriate labels. And there we go. There's my price level on the Y axis, real GDP on the X axis, downward sloping aggregate demand, upward sloping short run aggregate supply, and a vertical long run aggregate supply with YF below it. And our current equilibrium matches our long run equilibrium. Mark them both PL and Y1. And you got that? I think it'll give you two points on this one. All right, uh, now we're told that uh, Nepal and Thailand are trading partners and we have to assume that Thailand experiences an increase in real income. On the graph that we just saw, or that we just drew in part A, we're going to show the short run impact of the increase in real income in Thailand. Now, if people in Thailand have uh, more real income, they're going to buy more of everything, more of their own products, but also more foreign products. So for Nepal, they're going to see an increase in exports. Uh, that increase in exports is going to shift that aggregate demand curve to the right, resulting in a higher price level and higher amount of real GDP output. All right, on to part C. Assume that the short run equilibrium shown in our graph of part B, uh, Nepal is experiencing a $400 million uh, rupee output gap. Policymakers in Nepal want to use the discretionary fiscal policy to return the economy to full employment and the marginal propensity to consume is 0.7. We're going to calculate the minimum change and state the direction of the change in government uh, spending required to completely close the gap, output gap 
in the short run and we have to show our work. So the first thing we gotta do is calculate that uh, the spending multiplier. That's one divided by one minus the MPC. That gives us a spending multiplier of four. And then the output gap, is been we've been told is 400 million rupees so we're going to take that output gap uh, divide it by four that gives us a, a an amount of change of 100 now remember we had an inflationary gap so that means we are over producing right now by a hundred uh, uh, million rupees so now we need to decrease it by a hundred million rupees so the answer is a hundred million rupees decrease and that will overall increase uh, or decrease the uh, real GDP output by the 400 million to close that gap. 400, that, that's the gap, that's the 400 million, not 100 million, like I said a minute ago. All right, moving on to uh, part D, we have to assume instead no discretionary actions are taken, and we have, have to explain how automatic stabilizers in the short run would reduce the effect of the real change in real output shown on our graph in part B. So, um, uh, I haven't seen a question like this about automatic stabilizers. I kind of like it, but I bet a lot of people will end up getting this wrong. But income taxes will increase due to the uh, due to the increase in national income and transfer payments will decrease because fewer citizens will qualify for social programs. Those automatic stabilizers will decrease the rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve is what I have for an answer. Honestly, I don't know exactly what they're going to be looking for. I think that'll get me the point but I think there are a variety of ways that you could explain it. Uh, but I think you will be expected to at least mention either income taxes or transfer payments um, as being the automatic stabilizers. They, they might require both of them, but I admit I'm not 100% sure where the rubric is gonna land on this, but we'll see, we'll see. All right, and there you have it. Those are my best guess answers on this year's uh, uh, set two of the macroeconomics exam for 2025. Again, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, share it with a friend as well. Help me out with the algorithm. Uh, give me a heart or a like. And don't forget to let me know in the comments below what you think about my answers and if you agree with them or disagree with them or if you have any questions, let me know. Again, thank you so much for your support of re ReviewWeekon.com. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.